Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Hillary Ellis. I'm the lead emergency preparedness consultant from Ready or Not. And joining me is Celeste Knight. She is our outreach and travel coordinator. And this project is part of Northeast Document Conservation Center's Preservation Services. And it's supported by California State Library. I know some of you probably found us through California State Library and through the call calendar of events. And we still have a few more people joining, but I'm going to go ahead and get started. This session is recorded, so if there's a slide that you missed or you're looking to watch the slideshow again after the fact or share it with someone, uh, you'll be able to reach that on our YouTube channel and see the whole presentation recorded. So the Ready or Not team is located in cities across California, and our team has past work experience in libraries, archives, museums, historic societies, and in archaeology. The team includes Mario Gallardo, Osgejan Sayustin, Victoria Wong, Caroline Weiler, Jason Partita, and myself, and we work on emergency preparedness consultations in California. We have our outreach and travel coordinator Celeste Knight, and she's based in New Mexico. So the Ready or Not Cultural Heritage Disaster Preparedness Project is a three-year initiative from 2022 to 2025. And we have $3.14 million from funding provided by the state of California, administered by the California State Library. The Ready or Not project provides free on-site emergency preparedness assessments and recommendations for preparedness planning. So our goal is to get out there and get you guys started writing a disaster plan or an emergency action plan. And so far, our consultants have reached 170 libraries, archives, museums, cultural organizations, historic societies, history centers, and tribal nations. So that means that we go somewhere most weeks, uh, five or six different locations in a week. We've already reached 18 public libraries and many city or county public archives. So our first goal is to improve your emergency planning. And we point you toward resources, um, maybe that's sources of funding or direct assistance uh, for facilities improvements or security infrastructure. We're encouraging organizations to participate in regular safety trainings. And our consultants offer a variety of templates and toolkits to help you get started on a written disaster plan. The second project goal is to provide preservation assistance. And so if you're a public library that has a local history room, or maybe you're a special collections library, or a genealogy research collection, or other types of history for your city or town, our consultants will provide assistance with collections risk assessment and risk mitigation. So we examine what you're doing in terms of storage, access, care of collections, and we offer some best practices recommendations. And if you've got limited resources, we can point you toward grants and direct assistance to help cover some of the things that you're not doing yet. We also try to offer some low or no cost recommendations. So if you just invested more time with one of your staff members, could you tackle a small project yourselves in this year? So we want to help you improve preservation conditions for your collection. On the day of the site visit, our emergency preparedness consultant meets with the staff or volunteers. So the consultation includes an interview. We sit and we discuss questions about current practices for emergency preparedness. We also ask you about how you handled past incidents. So how did staff respond if there was a facilities incident like a burst pipe that rained water down over collections? Or how did you handle previous closures during the pandemic? What would you do if you were responding to a wildfire in your region? or if there's an earthquake or a landslide. And then in the second part of the visit, we walk through all the collection storage areas and any other areas of the building that you wanna share with us. The walkthrough gives us an opportunity to identify and assess risk for the whole building. We're looking at the facility in terms of the building, the site, the collection storage areas, and possible risk to people. 
So the ready or not consultants try to identify risk for your region or location. And we take an all hazards approach to this. So examples in California might be earthquake fault lines that are nearby, the potential for landslide or flood or sinkhole, man-made disasters like airplane or train crash, terrorism or civil disturbances, and climate change related hazards. So for public libraries, we are trying to focus on human safety as a priority. And for large university libraries, we're also considering how many people you have to evacuate if you have a huge building and there's thousands of students in it. We wanna know if you currently practice things like fire drills, active shooter training, the great shakeout for earthquake, which I believe happened last week, and other trainings like first aid, CPR, uh, AED, or wheelchair team lift training if you have stairs. We review your practices of collections risk assessment, if there are any. And so, um, I'm sorry, we've, I've skipped ahead a bit, but if you have any, this might include protection from light and ultraviolet light, um, protection from physical damage from things getting crushed or being crowded. Maybe you have a cataloging system or an inventory system, but it needs to be updated. Uh, we might help you assess how you want to prioritize digitization of analog and electronic media in the collection and hear about the projects that you're working on for that. Having an integrated pest management plan is pretty important to us, um, keeping pests out and monitoring the storage environment for temperature and relative humidity conditions that preserve historic collections. And so this is one that a lot of people struggle with is keeping temperature and humidity in check in California. Emergency management is a cycle with four phases. And so if you have experienced a disaster, you might respond, recover, and then take actions to mitigate risk in the future. So after you've had that flood, you know, you said, oh, we could have prevented this if we had um, checked the pipes and made sure they weren't dripping or causing condensation in the summer. Uh, we could have had more plastic sheeting ready to cover things quicker or had a bucket mop on this floor of the building so that we could sop up water quicker than that. So you prepare and you train for future disasters based on how you've experienced past ones. So each organization that has a visit from us is provided with an emergency preparedness assessment report. And the report contains the consultants observations about risk assessment and risk mitigation. It observes your emergency preparedness. It provides resources for you to add to your disaster plan for emergency response. And we encourage you to consider a plan for disaster recovery that includes a salvage recovery list of priority items. So if you are a small place with a local history collection and you know your city would be lost if they didn't have the portrait of their founder or um, the first run of newspapers from that community, consider adding those to the priority list. Okay, so the first example of one of the things that we offer is a template for the pocket response resource. And this is available at our website. You can download the template for it as well as instructions. It's a concise emergency resource that can be folded and tucked into your pocket or it can be stored on your device for immediate access to emergency contact info and emergency response actions. So on side A, it includes contacts. You might have institutional contacts external contacts and partner organizations or a local office of emergency services. You might also want to have alternate locations or mutual aid partners if you have to move operations off site or move to a different building temporarily to a safer place. And then side B includes actions. And so you'll include step-by-step -step instructions for your volunteers or your staff. And on this side, you consider how your organization will act in an emergency. So you might also include a list of assets, whether that's computers that hold vital information or physical collections or cultural heritage materials. And when printed on a sheet of paper on both sides, this folds up accordion style and can be folded down to the size of a credit card. And you're encouraged to review this every year and update it frequently if you have changes of information. 
A more complete template helps you write a comprehensive disaster plan. This would include institutional information, services, equipment, supply list. So anything that you've already accumulated in terms of resources to use in a disaster would go in a big binder. And we offer samples of disaster supply lists of what to purchase to prepare. We encourage business continuity plans. So this is a continuity of operations plan or a coop, especially if your institution is serving as a public event space or it help, is a host to cultural performances or festivals or other activities in your community that you would need to continue even if the building wasn't able to be functioning. Um, you might also want to have a daily checklist or a weekly checklist. So as buildings getting back to normal function, what are we checking on every day or every week? And then other emergency issues. Um, so you might act as a transportation hub to evacuate people from the community where there's bus services or um, other sorts of situations that you might account for, or it might actually act as a community hub. If you have special collections, we want you to have your salvage priorities listed in there with special instructions for that. And then salvage procedures, so how to dry out wet books or uh, take care of soot covered materials if there was wildfire, soot, and smoke. And I wanted to share a couple of positive examples of the way that public libraries are responsive to emergencies from some headlines from the news. And this is just in the past year. So libraries address gaps in California housing, weather response. As droughts, fire, and severe storms ravage the Western United States, local libraries offer sanctuary to those in need. And this is something we're seeing across California is that libraries are becoming cooling centers or warming centers when people are lacking shelter because of emergencies or because of homelessness. Why more public libraries are doubling as food distribution hubs. So sometimes we see this in the form of lunch at the library or little food pantries. But in an emergency, you might want to act as a, a center for incident command where food is being handed out in your parking lot. Uh, to be a location that's a safe space for that. And the city of Cathedral City, Riverside County partner, opened local assistance center at Cathedral City Library. And so this was just after Hurricane Hillary caused major flooding in that area. And, you know, what if your library could go above just having a disaster plan for its staff or patrons, but it could also provide additional support to the community. So your organization might want to develop plans that go beyond how to keep regular operations going. And you might actually wanna coordinate with the County Office of Emergency Services to develop plans for providing supplies, relief, shared meals, or assistance to people in your community. Okay, so who can schedule a consultation with us with Ready or Not? It can be any California organization. So if you have cultural materials or if you're a public library, you're eligible to participate. It's free. The consultation and assessment report are free. We particularly are interested in reaching organizations in underserved or underrepresented communities in California. And Ready or Not aims to strengthen disaster plans in social vulnerable communities. So these are areas where people might have an extra hard time uh, finding resources in case of disaster. They might have limited access to transportation or housing, or they might have other factors that cause them to be socially vulnerable. And we've met with a lot of libraries and archives that are just getting started in disaster planning. Uh, they might just be getting started in their strategic planning or preservation care of collections. And we really encourage those organizations to reach out to us and check out the FAQ page um, to see what else is involved. And if you have other people to refer us to, we're happy to reach folks outside of the library community as well. This is our contact information if you're interested in scheduling a consultation or finding out more. And I welcome any questions in the chat. Um, if we run out of time or uh, don't get to everyone's questions, you can um, follow up via email with us. Does anybody have any questions at this point? There is no fee for the consultation. I have a question. I, yeah, we don't charge anything. Um, because we're sponsored and uh, funded by California State Libraries, the whole experience is free. The time that we're on site, the report, everything. How long does a visit take? 
uh, we have a few different options that can take anywhere from a half a day to three days. <laughs> and so we recognize that some library systems have uh, several buildings and sites. And so if it's useful to you to schedule those all in one week while our consultant is in town, uh, we will go to a place and visit three libraries in one city in uh, two or three days, if that works for you. We also know that some libraries are very small and we can see the whole place in about four or five hours and not take up too much of your time, especially for folks with limited staffing. So we're very flexible in accommodating people's schedules. And it takes about two weeks or three weeks for us to get the report back to you with the assessment report. Uh, one thing I should mention is that after the report, you'll have some action items on there and we have an executive summary in the report that summarizes the first three priorities that we consider to be important for you to pursue. And if any of those require funding, we try to point you towards grant or direct assistance funding uh, that helps you tackle that. We can definitely do assessment work for a large system. So um, we've been to smaller towns like Roseville or um, Nevada County, those sorts of places. But we've also, um, you know, worked with partners that have recognized that they have five or six uh, locations and they want to have us come back, you know, day after day to visit each site. And we like to try and focus on the locations that have unique situations. So you've already had an emergency there and you have facilities questions or emergency questions for us. Or if you have local history collections in one of your locations and the rest of the branches are um, act more like a public circulating library. Oh, good question. Do we follow up after the assessment report? Yes, we uh, follow up when we have access to additional funding and grants that you're eligible for. So we will be in touch with everyone after the assessment report uh, for a few reasons. We send out an email about three months later to see how did the site visit go and how is the report helpful to you? We just ask a quick survey monkey survey. We follow up annually just to check in and see if you've made progress on having a disaster plan in place. And we're hoping that in year two and three of the project that we will follow up with groups of people in a region to see if we can help them uh, consider knowing their neighbors in terms of having a mutual aid partnership. So uh, the better you know other organizations in your area, uh, you guys can respond together within your county or within your region. Um, because some of the networks that were around previously in California have dissolved a little bit. So we're trying to build that back up slowly. We also follow up if folks have um, changes to the report that they want to make. So we allow you to correct our mistakes. <laughs> Yeah, we have a few library networks within California that are still active. Um, the Northern Counties Library Network is one. Uh, there's another one in San Joaquin Valley. That's a pretty strong network of libraries that uh, also includes university libraries in the region. It's very helpful. We also have Bay Area Mutual Aid Network. So Bamman is another one and then uh, Sacramento has Saturn. But I'm here in San Diego County and our uh, Southern California and Inland Empire uh, Imperial County ones have sort of fizzled and nobody knows who has the key to the mutual aid supply closet type of thing. So it's gotten a little bit out of date. Celeste will be following up after the Zoom session with an email to you to let you know how to sign up and get you additional information. And I thank everyone for being here today. And thank you for your questions. We look forward to meeting with you.